Hey everyone, it's Melissa with Vintage Bee Design. And today in my thrift flip, I am going to try a couple of techniques and products that I haven't tried before. And I'm gonna try to do them through all of my projects. So I have these two candlesticks that I thrifted. Um, both were $5.99 and then 40% off. They've been in my stash for a really long time. They've got great detail that is kind of hidden. I probably could have picked just about any color combination and added white wax and had great luck. But like I said, I wanted to try something new. So I've started with base painting each of them with one coat with Dixie Belle's Black Sands. That is a silk all-in-one. And on the second coat, I'm mixing in a texture medium. And a texture medium is like salt wash, sea spray, or fusion fresco. In this case, I've mixed it really thick and I'm applying it with my fingertips because I want this, this part to be kind of caked on. I want this to be uh, thick and I want it to crack. And so I'm just kind of going into some of the deeper grooved areas and applying a lot. While I was working on that, I asked my husband if he would mind cutting out a couple of wooden tops for these. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with the tops yet, but I wanted something a little more substantial. I wasn't happy with the way the tops of these candlesticks looked on their own. So my husband is using a bandsaw and just simply cutting out a couple of circles. Now, next to that sort of thick grungy texture I created, the really thick, I'm going for a softer texture. And to do this, I'm actually just sprinkling my texture medium right over the piece. And then I will use a brush and sort of pounce that in with the same black sands. This is gonna be a lighter texture than if you were to mix even a thin texture of the black sands in. This is just gonna give it like um, sort of little pock marks, if you will. It's not gonna leave a lot of texture, but it will kind of create um, a non-smooth technique, if you will. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it is a softer texture than if you were to mix your texture medium directly in with the paint. In this close-up, you can see the difference between the two textures. Um, you can definitely see that little soft texture underneath that grungy texture sort of um, in counterbalance to each other. For me, this was all about sort of opposing the really beautiful lines that were already in it and making it look a little bit crusty and old and having a dimpling effect of that softer texture. For this next step, I'm using some Fusion Casement. This is just sort of a um, soft weight, if you will. I am choosing to use all-in-ones for all of these products. So both the Dixie Belle Silk and the Fusion are all-in-ones. And here I am just sort of dipping a little, um, I already have a little bit watered down on this and then I'm spraying it to get that drippy look. I am really enjoying this drippy feeling. And I just kind of kept doing this over and over, rotating the piece, adding a little more. And then I would use the heat gun to both disperse the drips, if you will, and to make it dry so that it wasn't constantly um, sopping wet. But I put a ton of drips all over both of these pieces. You almost couldn't see all the black underneath of it when I was done. My goal here really was to get it super drippy. I wanted all that texture, especially running over the parts where I'd laid the texture medium on really thick. So that was the main area that I was focusing on with my paintbrush was going over those areas. And I wanted to be sure that every inch of this had some dripping to it. You can see the candle, the tall candlestick in the background here. And I actually went over it again once that was all the way dry and I finished this one. So I'm gonna say I really layered on all of this white drippiness over here. I wanted you to see all the texture and the best way for me to do that in a soft way other than waxing was to get the drips to roll over the texture and you could really see the each little bit of that texturing. And because I haven't said the word texture enough, I wanna go ahead and use the Patina Rust um, compound. And this has texture in it as well, kind of a grittiness. And I'm choosing the teal, the blue here, and I will leave a link in the description for everything. You can find all these products at vintagebedesign.com. 
But again, I'm going over the parts that where I created that thickness with that original texture medium. Now that I have the texture really highlighted through the drippies, I am going to go back with some white wax and white wax this entire piece. This is gonna soften the drips, make it a little bit aged and um, sort of limed, if you will, where the if this had been a real iron patina, something like that, it might have white, it might be, be turning white. And it's also gonna really pull out all of those carved details that are in both of these candlesticks. I think you can see in this close-up how it has really softened it overall. One of the products I haven't tried before is Dixie Belle's Copper Gilding Wax. So I picked up some for myself and I am going to add this to the candlesticks. I am primarily going to add this where um, kind of along the ridges and any place where I have a lot of that texture. Again, the, the original thick, thick texture. Um, and I'm gonna go in the areas that I have added the blue because ideally the copper is, we're gonna make this look like aged copper um, or aged iron and I want a little bit of shimmer. So I've started off kind of doing all the details and then I'm gonna sort of wipe that back a bit to soften it and really focus on the, the areas where I already have blue and again, those thick texture areas. To balance it all out, I did add some random little uh, dry brushes of the copper to some of the larger areas as well. Now I'm gonna go in with some DIY dark wax. I know there's a lot of layers here, but trust me, it'll all be worth it in the end. I just keep adding um, just to until I'm happy. So I'm not gonna dark wax this whole thing. I'm actually only sporadically dark waxing and really I'm trying to do this in a almost a dry brush fashion. This is just to add a little bit of depth in some random spots. So that's gonna balance all of that lighter whitewashing and the white drips. And here's another product that I haven't tried before. I am now going to add some of DIY's Shipwrecked. This is sort of a turquoise patina and it works as the counterbalance to the copper. So here I am going to go into the grooved areas primarily and then I'm going to wipe it back. I wasn't really sure about this, but I had seen it used in another video recently in the faux copper effect, and I decided I really wanted to try it. So again, I picked up some for myself, and I am really excited about how this turned out, and I actually will use it in the other projects I have moving forward in this video as well. I also added a little bit of Dixie Bell in the color Earth. I did not add any additional wax or anything, and I did use the little pointed brush from DIY paint, and I'm just sort of dusting this in places, and that is to take away a little bit of that sheen, and really I'm just trying to push it into those cracked, crusty areas. Um, this is, again, just to make it look a little bit old. I didn't use a ton on this, but I am super happy with the overall look this gives. I think as you look closely at this, you can see that just sort of softens and grunges it up a bit. And it's a nice juxtaposition to the shimmery copper and the turquoise. Can you see the patina in all those little cracks? And again, I didn't use it everywhere. I just sort of used it sparingly to add a little bit of extra color and texture. So now I am going to rough up the circles that John cut out for me. I, in the end, you could skip this step. I don't think you could really see it, but my original thought, you know, I wasn't really sure how I was going with this. This is sort of an example how things morph over time. What I wanted to do was add some old and gray. This is a barnwood patina. It is a gray patina, but when I added it, while well, it's the right color, when I put the wood next to the candlesticks, I didn't really like seeing the wood grain. 
So I decided I needed to go a different route. This was just too sheer and the wood didn't really make sense with the rest of the project. I broke out my texture medium again. I don't want this too rough because I do want to be able to put candlesticks on here, but I broke out the texture medium, tried that with the old and gray. I still wasn't getting the exact look that I wanted. So I left this kind of thick and then mixed up a little bit of leather press gray while this was still wet. And this sort of gave it a neat dimple effect. And I was, again, um, this was something that I was sort of, you know, pulling out of thin air. How am I going to make this work? In the end, it would have been better if I had actually just done the exact same techniques on the candlestick to the wood, but I didn't want to repeat the whole process again. So this is where we are. Here you can see the effect that I created here, but it still wasn't quite balanced. So I'm going to repeat some of the last steps adding the turquoise rust effects next um, pretty heavily over the top. Again, I really want to get rid of that wood grain look. So I know this was a lot of layers and this was the first time I've used a couple of these products, but I'm really happy with how this came out. I think there is so much texture and these look old world. Yeah, I'm real happy. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Just too much work or do you think it all was worth it in the end? And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage B, and I have just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. If you've been around this channel for a really long time, you might remember Sue and I thrifting this. This was thrifted kind of as a challenge to myself to see if I could actually make something this awful and there's lots of broken bits look actually reasonable that somebody would want to buy it. So the first thing that I did was paint the entire thing in Hampton Olive, which is an all-in-one silk by Dixie Belle. I mixed salt wash into that and I'm using the Perfectionist brush by DIY Paint, which is the pointy one, typically called a pointed sash or French tip. Next, I'm gonna use DIY Paint White Wax, and I'm choosing this white wax specifically because it's very creamy. If you were to try to do this with, say, Dixie Belle's white wax, you would struggle to get it on here. Because this is so creamy, it goes into all of the nooks and crannies really easily. I used a very tiny brush also to get into all those cracks and crevices. Then I used a clean, dry cloth just to wipe all that wax off. And then I'm using a pointed sash with some DIY dark and decrepit. Notice this is different than the D Dixie Belle Earth. This is a little bit of a different color. But here, this was really dusty when I originally bought it and before I cleaned it out in the sink. And I'm using this to create a little bit of dust again. I want this to soften the harsh white wax 
that I just put on. And again, I didn't use any extra wax. I'm just using this to, again, make it look old and not like it's just been painted. Now I'm gonna break out that gilding wax again and I am going to do some high points, a little heavier where the paint pulled off when I waxed. And then I am also going to do some dry brushing over probably about 60% of this and this is going to make it look again a little bit more like an old copper piece then going in with the diy shipwreck very lightly i am dusting sort of the the areas down in the grooves the tips of the leaves things like that this is going to probably again maybe about 60 percent kind of trying to stick to the deeper parts and then right outside the coppery areas so it feels a bit more like an actual patina. I almost want to say we're just giving this a dusting as I air quote of this turquoise patina. If at any point I felt like I had dulled the copper down too much with this patina I just with my fingertips added a little bit more shimmer. At some point I found this one candlestick and a plate and glued the top. Then I repeated the exact same process that I did in the fruit basket. All right, so here is a close up of the finished product. Tell me, do you think that I achieved my goal of making these into something that somebody might actually want to buy versus the original piece? It certainly looks better and that is enough perhaps. Overall, I think the collection is really nice. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video and videos like this, please be sure to hit like, subscribe, and share. It really helps. See you next week.